Days of Our Lives is the most nominated show at the Daytime Emmys this year, uh, and that includes a Best Younger Actress nomination for Victoria Conifal, who joins me for today's chat. I'm Daniel Montgomery, Senior Editor for Gold Derby, which pulls the awards predictions of experts and thousands of fans uh, around the country and around the world, just like you. Uh, so first off, Victoria, uh, what was it like finding out that you had been nominated? W were you watching the announcement on the talk? Um, I wasn't. I was actually asleep. Um, <laughs> I uh, work really hard and I, I barely have any time to sleep during the week. So on my days off, I like to catch up on my beauty sleep. Um, but I, I woke up to a phone call from my best friend, Olivia Keegan, who actually is nominated herself. And um, she said, guess who got nominated? And I said, both of us. And she said, yeah. And then there was a lot of screaming. Don't really remember exactly what happened. We were so excited. Um, but it was really surreal. I, I remember getting off the phone call with her and kind of just sitting in stillness and, and in the, the shock of, of everything that, you know, was going through my brain. Um, I was overwhelmed, grateful, and uh, yeah, just proud, proud of myself and proud of days of our lives for having so many nominations, proud of every soap because uh, what we do is really hard. And um, I don't know, we worked hard all year round and I'm just excited to, to go to the Emmys and celebrate that with everyone. And, uh, Days of Our Lives in particular uh, has a really strong uh, set of, of younger actors and, and this entire kind of love quadrangle that you've been in on the show all kind of got nominated, uh, not just you and Olivia, <laughs> but uh, Lucas Adams and Kyler Pettis for Best Younger Actor. Uh, mm -hmm. What's it like uh, uh, getting that whole group uh, that you've worked with uh, in there, especially in that younger field of all these up and comers? Yeah, I'm so proud of them. I mean, we are definitely the younger generation on the show. Our storyline is is set to attract a, a younger viewership, and um, I don't know. I just I, I texted all of them, and I was like, guys, we need to go out for drinks or something because this is this is amazing. I'm just proud of everyone. Like I'm, I have so much love for every person on that show, especially Lucas and Kyler and Olivia, because we work so closely together. Our, our storylines are always intermingled with each other somehow. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for them. And what would be interesting is that uh, if you or Olivia Rose Keegan wins Best Younger Actress, you'd actually be only the second Days actress to win that category ever. Um, really? you know, yeah, True, True O'Brien did it a few years ago, and that was the first time. So uh, you or Olivia would be second. Uh, wow. What would that be? You know, what would your thoughts be if, if that were to happen and you'd sort of join that very exclusive list? I mean, I'd be pretty psyched out. Um, I didn't even know that. I, I thought that that we had taken it a couple more times. Um, I mean, I would just be honored to represent the show in that way, you know, to, uh, I, I mean, also a lot of it is because of the writers. The writers have been giving me such amazing um, content to work with and to, to play with. And it's like, if they hadn't been writing the, adventurous storylines that Sierra has had, then I'm not sure if I'd, I'd be able to fully show everyone what I can do. So they've been, uh, they've been writing some great work. So I would, I would definitely owe it a lot of it to, to the show and to the writers and the directors and, and everyone involved. And, uh, and that's one of the uh, uh, great things about the daytime Emmys uh, in particular is that they're based on the material because, uh, you know, the nominees and winners are, are determined by uh, sample uh, uh, performance reels that are submitted to uh, Emmy judges. Uh, so, so what, what did you uh, submit? What scenes did you submit? And, and what can you tell me about why you uh, chose those? Yeah. Um, so the first scene that I submitted was actually an episode it was the first episode that I aired in, in uh, 2018. It was um, like three months after I started shooting the show. Um, I It was with Galen, um, he plays Rafe, and Sierra had a hangover and she was confronting him about how he cheated on her mother with his ex-girlfriend or ex-wife. Can't remember right now, I'm not too sure. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> It's complicated. Salem is a complicated town. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was confronting him and, and I just, I don't know, those scenes really stuck out to me. They're still my favorite that I've ever shot on the show to this date because 
there's just a great level of vulnerability vulnerability and um and power that that comes across in in sierra's personality for the first time i feel like and uh yeah the dynamic between me and galen is amazing um so i felt really confident in those scenes and then there was a scene that I submitted where I um, was discussing uh, Sierra's rape with Mary Beth Evans. I picked that for a variety of reasons. I think that it's important to, um, you know, I mean, a lot of the times I'll get DMs on Instagram or, or messages on Twitter saying like, I am a rape survivor. Um, watching you talk about that really affected me and it, it, it helped me. Thank you. And I, I was overwhelmed. I mean, as an actress, that's all I've ever wanted to do is to impact someone's life through my art. So um, that scene really resonated with a lot of fans and it resonated with me. So I, I put that in there. And then to lighten it up, because it's always so dark and heavy, I added a scene with Robert Scott Wilson where uh, he had fixed Sierra's motorcycle and they're kind of like flirty and they're not you know, together yet. And there's this like weird sexual tension between them and uh, it was bright and happy and I wanted to just throw that in there to to give add variety to my reel. And uh, uh, speaking of uh, Robert Scott Evans, uh, you know, the, the two Wilson. of you have been, uh, 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 Wilson, sorry. <laughs> uh, Mary I was Beth thinking Evans. Mary Beth Evans, yes. Well <laughs> <laughs> the three names are uh, threw me off there. Um, you, know, you two have been paired up in, in uh, 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 you know, the two of you are, are Sin and now uh, the this new uh, couple that's that's emerged on the show, uh, which seems unlikely on paper since he you know is coming back from being a serial killer. Uh, what did you think about being paired you know with him when when that storyline started? To develop? Yeah, um, initially we weren't supposed to to have a romantic storyline, but the writers saw our chemistry and, and decided to write towards that. Um, I mean, I thought it was incredible it adds up to a perfect soap you know um it's it's the perfect storm it's the bad guy that everyone hates you know sierra's mother in particular was the person who threw him behind bars a couple of times um and i don't know i just thought i i thought it was a great recipe for a perfect storm yeah and uh, you know, since since this uh, uh, character has has uh, dealt with you know this kind of trauma in, in her past, as as you mentioned in in, in the reel you submitted, uh, that actually happened to the character before uh, you took over the role. Uh, so what was it like, kind of jumping into those kinds of emotional waters? Uh, you know, when you know it, it sort of preceded your your tenure on the show. Yeah. Um... You know, given that that it's a soap opera, there are a, a lot of circumstances that go on for the characters that aren't particularly relatable to regular people. Um, so it's 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 not necessarily you know drawing emotion from the circumstance. It's seeing you know what have I gone through in my life and what emotions have I experienced that could be applicable to anything that Sierra is going through. So I just I, I tried my best. It's a difficult thing. Um, uh, I mean, the the fact that this happened to Sierra, just talking about it, I'm a really emotional person. Like, I, I will cry when the dog dies in the movie, you know? Um, so I just, even reading the lines and, and hearing it out loud made me emotional because it's such a vile thing to happen to a woman. So it was, I'm not gonna, you know, for lack of a better word, it was it was pretty easy to 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 get to that place just because it's such an atrocious thing that it's like, how could you not be upset talking about it? And uh, and you know, of course, the writing is is, is a big part of what uh, gives uh, you and everyone else the material they need to get uh, uh, Emmy nominations and and uh, you know the you know viewer support and uh, Ron Carlovati has been the head writer on days now for, for a, a couple of years now. Um, he's written for One Life to Live and General Hospital. Uh, so he's, he's you know, kind of a veteran at this at this point. What's it like uh, getting his, you know, storylines and getting, you know, working with his writing? It's incredible. He always has amazing stuff to give us. And what I love about him is that he's consistent in the characters, personalities and their the subtle things about you know their dislikes and and he just does a great job at giving us real 
people to work with. You know, like they're, Sierra can't use chopsticks. She's never been able to use chopsticks. Every time she eats Chinese food, she can't use chopsticks. It's those little subtle things that that bring reality to the character that I really love. Um, and he's great at doing that. And, uh, you know, what was it like when g g soap operas can be such a gauntlet, as you mentioned, it's such a, it's such hard work just doing a soap opera. You know, it's five shows a week. Um, sometimes, sometimes, eight, sometimes we do eight shows a week. Oh yes, because you film and you film so far in advance, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of yeah. stuff happening. Uh, was was did that feel like uh, kind of a gauntlet when you first joined the show? Uh, and how's oh. that changed since you've been on? I mean, listen. When I first started, they <laughs> Albert, um, one of the directors and executive producers, he came up to me and he was like, "So we're going to start you off slow, just so that you get used to the pace." I was like, "Great." It didn't seem slow to me. It was very fast. Um, it's something, I guess, you just have to learn how to do it to survive. Um, you put your brain in survival mode and, and you start running on all this adrenaline and energy that you didn't know you had and you just, you roll with it. I mean, um, I've always been great at memorizing, so that part wasn't difficult for me. I have somewhat of a photographic memory, so that serves me really well in, in this industry. But what I found most difficult was on the days where we do film three episodes in one day, because that happens sometimes. Like yesterday, I filmed two episodes in a day, is, is switching gears and, uh, you know, having all this, not only lines, but also blocking. And then, you know, the emotion that comes behind it. It's like it's, it's so much to handle at once and to balance it all was difficult in the beginning. But uh, I think I'm, I'm getting the just I'm getting the jig of it you know it's a it's a blessing and I love it I love being that busy it makes me feel really important and uh it just it's a blessing to be able to do what I love so even if it's difficult it's difficult is good and busy is good so I'm blessed is there some part of the uh, the experience that you know now that you're you know more than a year in uh, you know that that's gotten easier or that you've learned how to cope with better or you know just ways you got your your legs under you? Yeah, I mean everything. Uh, developing relationships with everyone on set, whether it be you know our hairstylists or makeup artists. Um, getting to know our castmates more. I feel like looking back on it, I was just thinking about this the other day too. Um, looking back on my position seven months ago, I still felt like a guest. And now it kind of feels more like home. You know, it's a uh, set is like my second bedroom. So it's uh, it's great. And uh, a days of our lives films uh, so far in advance. And of course, storylines uh, uh, can can go in any number of different directions that I'm sure you must have to keep secret. Uh, what, what's it like keeping those secrets for like literally months? It's, <laughs> there's so much that happens and I want to talk about it, but I can't. Um, it's, it's the hardest to deal with in interviews because they'll be like, what's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? And I'm like, oh, something that I filmed two months ago, but I can't talk about it because you won't see it for four. So it's like, <laughs> Um, it's, it's hard, but I've always been a pretty great secret keeper. I'm pretty trustworthy. So, uh, it's, it's just, I mean, it's hard not to tell my mom because my mom watches the show and I want her to be surprised and she'll be like, what happens with this character? And I'm like, Ma, wait and see, you know, it's the element of surprise. You need to be an audience member and, and, and feel what everyone else is feeling. So, yeah. Do you watch it while it's airing and then, you know, film, you filmed it so long ago that you're like, oh, I forgot I did that or did it that way or? Yeah, the other day I had an interview and they were talking about a storyline and I couldn't remember for the life of me. They were like, Sierra, blah, 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 and this happens and this, and then there's a gun. And I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, totally. And I kind of just <laughs> winged it. I had no idea what was going on. And then after I hung up the phone, I remembered what happened. But uh yeah, there's so much, and and there's so much that's constantly being produced in the now that it's like, I have to throw it out of my brain. You know, I don't have room to to hold all of this story and and like literally thousands of pages at this point. Like it's 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 hard, but um, yeah, I do my best. 
<laughs> and uh, soap fans, uh, soap operas have some of the most passionate fans uh, in in oh any yeah. entertainment uh, medium. Uh, you know, wh what has been the the fan response like since since you've joined the cast? Um, I, I initially I had anticipated a little bit of hate because I was taking over um, someone else's role. I'm, I wasn't the original Sierra. I'm I'm the third one, so I was expecting mixed reviews. But from the very moment that I aired, I have received nothing but love and support. And um, I, I I couldn't ask for anything more. I mean, they're the most dedicated fans I could possibly imagine. Um, at the last day of days, I saw this woman with an hourglass tattoo on her rib cage. So, you know, they, they care a lot and they love us a lot. And it's, it's, uh, amazing that I can, I can reciprocate it, you know? I love them a lot. Well, uh, thank you very much, Victoria, for uh, for talking to me today, and good luck at the Emmys. Uh, and for everyone watching this, please hit uh, the like and subscribe buttons to see more from our Gold Derby channel, and you can watch all of our interviews this season through our Emmy playlist. Uh, thank you again so much, Victoria. Thank you so much.